Good morning, everybody. Let's stand to our feet and we're going to worship together.
everybody welcome St Peter's would you like to have a seat and uh, thanks so much um, Evie uh, is leading worship sitting down it's not a, a laid back approach uh, she, poor thing she she knocked her knee on the way into practice this morning. I, I don't know whether she should be, but she's insisting on that she leads worship. And she only just says that I'll lead worship as long as when we get to it, everybody really goes for it. Um, so uh, if you wouldn't mind, whenever we sing, if we can all really, really worship, uh, that will be um, the reason why uh, we save Evie's leg. Hey, um, we're going to have a, a baptism today. Delighted that we've got um, Albertine, who's one of our congregations. She's one years old. Uh, she's got uh, a brother and a sister, Sigily, who's seven, Winston, who's four. And today, Albertine is going to be baptised. Would you like to meet her? So, Albertine, would you like to bring your mum and dad, Nick and Calandra? And why don't you bring Winston with you as well and Sigily? Come on, come on. Fantastic. And uh, just while they're uh, coming, um, this is something that we do for all children of um, people at St. Peter's, uh, believing parents. And uh, we hope that everyone here will be baptised. Uh, some people get baptised when they're adults. Uh, some people get baptised when they're children. Uh, but one way or another, we all get baptised as a mark of being a Christian. And uh, it's one of the early signs of uh, being in the church. Being, and uh, so this is a terrifically significant occasion. And it also gives us an opportunity as a church, not only to welcome Albertine, but also to renew one or two vows um, for ourselves in our own uh, baptism. So I'm going to talk you uh, through it. Are there um, godparents as well? Are they, are they on their way? Some, they're on their way. Okay, fine. Um, what do you want us to do? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. let's, um, any godparents come and join us as well. Sorry, I should have done that. Welcome the godparents. <laughs> Sorry to embarrass you. Amazing. And there's some words that are going to come up on the screen uh, for all of us as well. Uh, Jesus said, let the children come to me and do not stop them. We thank God for Albertine, who's come to be baptised today. Christ loves her and welcomes her into the church. And so I ask all of us, there's some words coming up. Will you support Albertine as she begins her journey of faith? We will. And then uh, some, uh, uh, another question that I beg upon. Will you help her to live and grow within God's family? We will. Uh, so which means, you know, every time we see Albertine, just see if you remember to recognise her, pray for her, say, how are you doing? Well, she won't be able to tell you for a few years, but as time goes on, how's school? How's, so we're going to support her. Amazing. So these then are um, questions for us as well. Oh, the, well done, the godparents. Fantastic. <laughs> Amazing. Well, uh, come and join us. So we always do these baptisms at the beginning of the service um, to try and catch out um, godparents who are late. Uh, I'm, I'm really sorry. <laughs> it's just what we do. Well done. Have you come a long way? London. Yeah, it is a long way. Wow. <laughs> can, can I know? You've done amazingly. You're here. Yeah. Come, um, great. We were just about to do um, some promises that you're about to make. Um, thank you. Uh, so I've asked the parents and godparents, uh, do you, so you're going to make these promises on behalf of Albertine until such a time where uh, she can articulate these for herself. Uh, so it kind of works because you're saying these um, for her. Do you turn away from sin? I do. Do you reject evil? I do. Do you turn to Christ as Saviour? I do. Do you trust in him as Lord? I do. Uh, Albertine, I'm going to just do um, a little sign of the cross here like that. And mum and dad, you might like to um, do that as well while I say this. Christ claims you for his own. Receive the sign of his cross. Do not be ashamed of Christ. You are his forever. And we all say to God, stand bravely with him against all the powers of evil and remain faithful to Christ to the end of your life. Almighty God, whose Son, Jesus Christ, was baptised in the River Jordan, we thank you that you've brought through the deep waters of death and brought your Son and raised him to life in triumph. Set apart this water, that your servant washed in it may be made one with Christ in his death and resurrection. 
So um, I talked about some vows that we make as a church now, like our own baptism vows. And so we're going to say these together. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being in life, the one for whom we exist? I believe and trust in Him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? I believe and trust in Him. And then the third one. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known to the world? I believe and trust in Him. This is the faith of the church, together we say. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So um, I'm going to do a swap. If I um, come a little bit closer, Albertine. Dad's just whispered, it's going to be all right. (laughs) So, Albertine, Juniper, Joy, it's going to be all right. I baptise you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hannah, come and um, Hannah's our, our children's kids pastor here. She's going to come. So beautiful, Albertine. You did so well. We love you, Albertine. And do you know what? We this week have been praying for you. And Albertine, I have asked some of the year five sixes here at St. Peter's to be praying for you this week because we all want to see you grow. We're a church family together and we love you. And I love your new trick, friend. It's so good. Um, Albertine, as the year five sixes were praying for you this week, they felt God wanted to remind you of his unconditional love. They wanted to tell you, for God so loved the world, he loved you, Albertine, that he gave his one and only son so that anyone who believes in him will not die, but will have eternal life. They also, Albertine, wanted to share with you a verse from 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. And it says, For God has not given us a spirit of timidity, but of power and love and discipline. Albertine, we are gonna pray for you together as one church family. And I want to invite you guys to join as church family to pray. And we do that here sometimes by reaching out a hand. And that's just us saying, yeah, we, we are in this prayer. And so whatever age you are, I would love for you to join us as we pray. And I'm gonna ask one of the godparents this godparent, um, to pray for us. And we are gonna reach out a hand and join as we pray with him for Albertine. You ready? Father God, we just thank you and praise you today that we can welcome Albertine into your family. Would you guard and protect her as she starts this journey of faith? Would you be with her? Would she come to know you and know how much you love her? Would you be a comfort to her in times of trouble? Would you be light in times of darkness? Would she find strength in the power of your word as she grows in faith? But above all, would you celebrate with her in times of joy? Would your spirit be with her now and as she grows in Jesus' name? Amen. Should we stand and will you join with me in welcoming Albertine Juniper Joy Autumn to our church? Amazing. While we're um, standing, um, let's um, uh, turn to one another. Maybe um, find out who people are around you. But particularly, yeah, have you been baptised? Um, were you christened as a baby? Um, or was it grown up? Was it in this church? It could be a good conversation starter. Uh, make sure you're finding someone you know. And the children are going to make their way out to the groups now. Uh, so if you've got a little one with you, uh, now's the time to take them out.
That's great. Let's bring those conversations to a close and we're going to continue worshipping.
Fix my eyes upon the cross I'm reaching out with all I've got I'm letting go to start again I need your love, that's why I'm here Waiting outside my
Let's breathe in that truth. Just in your heart to thank the Lord Jesus again for his grace, his mercy. Maybe take an opportunity to bring to the foot of the cross anything where you know that you've said or done or thought something that you shouldn't and just receive again his grace and mercy. that truth deep into our hearts and that we will live from it in Jesus name Amen Amen would you like to take a seat and uh, thank you so much um, Evie for leading um, uh, our worship today can we thank and the production and the guys who do the live stream I don't think we um, thank them enough, do we? Um, volunteers, on the, there's Chris on the camera, works all week and then he comes and does the camera. And then um, on the sound desk, um, just looking there, I think there's four people on that desk. I think one of them you pay for, the rest come as volunteers. Amazing, isn't it? And then there's you, um, you do the children's church, you are at Safe Haven last night, you're on the Alpha team. Amazing, thank you so much um, for everything that you're doing. Um, and uh, welcome to everybody on the live stream. Uh, that is phenomenal uh, that you get to be part um, of this as well. If we've not met, I'm Archie, and uh, Sam, my wife, and I uh, lead the church here. It's wonderful uh, to have you. I want to uh, talk to you for a moment about uh, this. And uh, there's a leaflet around. It's um, our prayer week, but it's called Every Single Street. And uh, we're going to have a week of prayer as a family of churches. So St. Peter's, but also uh, our churches in Whitehawk, uh, Hove, uh, Hollingbury, and also Five Ways. And um, have a little look if you haven't, if you've got one. Uh, but I just wanted to make sure you don't miss this week, um, because I think it's really neat what Angie Green, our prayer director, has got. And um, one of the main things is there's an app. I didn't know you could do this. There's an app that everyone can log on to. And then this week pray for your street and streets in your neighbourhood, as many streets as you can and want to. And basically, we're going to try and fill this app. We're going to change its colour so that we can be sure that over the week, between our family of churches, we've covered as many streets as possible in prayer. So just have a think, okay, this week, and I'm walking to the bus or whatever, I'm going to pray, not just like put in my AirPods, whatever it is, so get to pray. And uh, my other tip for the prayer walking is, um, Jay John that said this to me once, when I asked him about how to plant a church, he said to me, uh, Jay John's an evangelist, and he said to me, when you plant your church, what you should do is every afternoon, five days a week, spend one hour walking around your neighbourhood, praying and greeting everybody that you see. Five days a week, one hour, and see what happens. And I haven't always managed that, uh, but I have, and the team have done that um, over the years, and God has grown a work uh, through here. So what will God do through your prayers, your prayer walking? So that's one thing, the app. Second thing I would encourage you to do is we're going to get together at 7.15 each morning on Zoom, 
to pray. There's a group of people who pray together like this um, Monday to Friday anyway. But prayer week is a great time to jump on. And the thing is, you can do this with your screen on or off. So you can do it when you're on the train. You can do it when you're on the bus. You can do it when you're walking. You can have it on in the kitchen when you're sorting your kids out. Everybody can join 7.15 till 8 on Zoom because you remember you can mute it and you can turn the screen off if you want. Wouldn't it be amazing if we made that a touch point? Maybe you can't do Monday to Sunday. Maybe you can't do seven days, but could you do one day? Could you do two days? So we're going to get together like that and pray. And then the other thing we're going to do is, well, there's other, the other things you'll see, but the other one I'm going to do is Tuesday evening, uh, Kingdom Come. Uh, we're going to start in here, but then we're going to also head out. And we're not only going to do it here, but the churches in Whitehawk, in um, Hollingbury, in Ho, they're all going to do it as well. So can I encourage you, and we've got uh, these leaflets, you can find them at the Connect Point or on your way out. Uh, you can um, do one of those QR codes, which downloads the app. Um, uh, get involved. Uh, get involved, because uh, I can't think of a more important thing uh, that we should be doing at the moment than praying for our city during the Fringe Festival and everything else. So when you're not at uh, the Lady Boys of Bangkok, will you be praying? <laughs> now then, let me just see if I can fight, get this thing working, and I'm going to preach at you. Technology, eh? I need my glasses for this. Just a second. Sorry on the live stream. Make that cup of tea. Come back in a second. I better sort this out before I go to HTB. <laughs> They'll send me right back. Luckily you're, luckily, you're more forgiving. Here we go now. Talk. Oh, never mind. I can remember most of it. Great. No, I can't actually. I'm sick. Tell you what it's done. It's like um, it's switched the wrong way around. I think I'll have a go like this anyway. Hey, um, and there's a reading coming up, which I can't do because that's on the screen. So here's the reading um, from 1 Peter chapter 5. There we go. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, Peter says this, Be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you've suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm and steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. What I wanted to um, talk about today is something that you all said earlier to Albertine Orton. You said to her, stand bravely with Christ against all the powers of evil and be faithful to Jesus as long as you, as you live. And uh, I believe that you, uh, God is saying that to you as well as us saying that to little Albertine. In John 10, chapter, uh, John 10, verse 10, uh, it says that the thief, that's the enemy, is, uh, comes to kill and to destroy. But Jesus says, I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. Have you ever considered why those two sentences are together? When we're the same breath. Because sure, God has a plan for your life that is life in all its fullness. But it won't just roll in. It's opposed there is a, a thief, an enemy, it's contended for. And uh, this, this enemy is uh, extremely uh, strong and powerful. And one of the things about this enemy is that, well, look, I'll put it this way. Albertine Orton, I'm sorry to be the one to break this to you, but you have been born into a world at war. And all your days as a Christian, 
you will live in a battle amongst the whole forces of heaven and hell raging. God loves you, Albertine, and has a glorious plan for your life. But there is an enemy, the devil, who hates you. And he has a bad plan for your life. And this enemy, he's very, very good at it. He is subtle as a snake. He is as powerful as a lion. He can frighten, lie, deceive, destroy, kill. He can even devour and kill you. He is not gentle. He is cruel and vicious. He wants to destroy your relationship with God. He is always prowling around Albertine, looking for someone to devour. And that someone is you. But the good news is, Albertine, that you have what it takes. If you learn and practice how to resist him in some practical ways, and I'm going to teach you three ways this morning, then your life with Jesus will be exhilarating. It won't always be easy, but it will be joyful and utterly fulfilling. But if you don't take these steps that I'm about to teach you, then you will give the enemy influence in your life. And then you'll discover that you'll wonder why Christian faith doesn't like work so well. And you'll wonder what all the fuss is about. And some have even given up. Now remember that Peter, who says these words, he knows all about the battle against the enemy because one time, I mean, he, he denied Jesus three times. He fell asleep when he should have been praying. He said a really bad message to Jesus at one point, which was like really wrong. He shouldn't have said it. And one time Jesus said to him, Peter, Satan has asked me to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that you will not fall. So he knows what he's talking about. And he says that you cannot stop the lion, the enemy prowling around, but you can resist him with these three practical things. Number one, beware the slippery slope. Do you recognise this man? Neil Parrish, the MP who was watching porn in the House of Commons and has resigned. And whatever else you think about that. I found his interview that he gave with the BBC absolutely fascinating. He said this. He said, the situation was, funnily enough, it was tractors I was looking at. I did get into another website that had a very similar name and I watched it for a bit, which I shouldn't have done. But then this is what I want you to hear. But my crime, he said, my biggest crime is that on another occasion, I went in a second time. Now this is exactly how the devil works. You do something wrong once, you all do. You watch porn, you say something, you do something you shouldn't do. And the devil goes, ah, I've got a feeling you may have a weakness in that area. I think I'll try you again there. And if you give in a second time, then you take a second step. And then you begin to be on a path towards a slippery slope. Towards trouble. You see, the problem is not the first time. You, we all do, we all make mistakes. We all do things, say things, th things that we shouldn't do. The problem is not the first time, it's the second time. Because the remedy is, I think as they say when you're trying to build a habit, therefore, in fitness or whatever, is they say, don't they never fail twice? In other words, be watertight, be, be alert and self-controlled, Peter says. A couple of years ago, during the first um, 
lockdown. We had seven people uh, living under our roof in that lockdown. And uh, one of my jobs was to do the weekly shop. So I would do that in Asda. And with seven uh, teenagers, it was a, a big shop. I mean, um, w- well over 100 pounds each week. And do you remember those queues and the distancing and everything? And I used to do scan and go uh, in Asda. And uh, one time after I'd done the weekly shop, uh, I scanned and goed, uh, went, put everything back in the car, uh, drove home. And as I was driving home, I remembered that I'd not put this through, a lime. And uh, so I did, I thought I'd better go back uh, because um, this is 18p. And uh, so I'll go back and throw myself at the mercy of customer services and uh, offer to pay, pay double. Uh, But I didn't do that. I thought to myself, Asda can afford that. I mean, the supermarkets are making an absolute fortune during the pandemic. 18p, they're not going to, in fact, I don't know what else I can do with scan and go. So I went home with my stolen lime and I, I cooked with it that evening. Uh, one of my specialities, which is, um, uh, well, if you must know, it's um, Thai green curry. But it didn't, it tasted a bit sour when I was eating it. And uh, I, um, I fessed up to my family that, and they were absolutely horrified. Lime crime, they said. <laughs> so I, 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 uh, and so I, I, I lived with the guilt. And so when I next went back to Asda, I, I paid for a virtual lime, 18p. And uh, actually, every now and then in the two years since, I'm overcome by a little sense of guilt and I, I pay for another virtual <laughs> lime. Paul writes in Ephesians, don't give the enemy a foothold. Because a foothold can easily become a bridgehead. And then it's much harder to resist the momentum of doing the wrong thing again and again. A few weeks ago, I was up in Nottingham. And I, um, in the morning, I had to get, a, I was staying over in the morning, I got a, um, had to get a taxi to get a, to the station in Nottingham to come back to Brighton. And uh, when I got to Nottingham Station, I asked the taxi driver for a receipt. And uh, he said, would you like to fill it out yourself? Which, as you know, is a very well-known ploy for helping people to fiddle their expenses. And I said, no, um, please, will you do it for me? Because I was sober and alert and self-controlled at that time in the morning. (laughs) So he wrote out the receipt for me. And as he was handing it to me, I said, you know, you shouldn't really do that. He said, why not? Everybody does it. I said, because I've been a Christian nearly all my life. And I got the Holy Spirit living in me. But even I, just for a moment, if I hadn't been self-controlled and alert, I was a little tempted. Imagine everybody who's not a Christian, who doesn't have the Holy Spirit living. Imagine what you're, what you're sowing right through Nottingham. He said, I, I don't, he said, I don't know what you're talking about. It's what most people say to me, but anyway. <laughs> Beware the slippery slope. Second thing, never forget that you're forgiven. Look, it's not really about watching porn or an 18p lime or a taxi expense. Honestly, Jesus can take care of all those things. In fact, he has. Because of the cross, you are forgiven for every slip that you ever made and every slip that you ever will make. Do you really think that stealing an 18p lime is going to break the power of the cross. Oh, Jesus is thinking, oh no, I thought I covered everything. But that 18p line, that's really sent me over the edge. The cross doesn't work for that. No, no, no. What the devil is trying to do is much more powerful than that, much more powerful than an individual particular sin because he hasn't got an answer to that because Jesus has already declared you forgiven. So what the devil is doing is a different tactic to that. He's trying to get you to think that the cross does not work for you. That you stop believing in the cross, that that somehow God is no longer kind, no longer forgiving. You doubt God's goodness. Basically, you give up. Which is why Peter says, stand firm in your faith. What is your faith? 
that Jesus Christ died for you. That you are made righteous and clean. That when you muck up because of Jesus, you are still seen as righteous and clean. And a failure here and there, a failure here, there and everywhere for that matter, is not going to change that. But the devil will try to get you to believe that you've blown it. Remember Peter. I mean, three times he denied Jesus. That is a pretty major error. But Jesus brought him back. Look, this out of the three things I'm saying, this is the most important one for you. It's that every time you screw up, Try and close the gap between your failure and God's forgiveness as quick as you can. If you don't, what happens is that your mistake, your 18p lime, your look at the porn, your taxi expense, your mistake can fester and it can begin to produce in you shame. And that is much harder to deal with. In fact, some of you are there already. Uh, that's why I'm so angry with the devil. Because he's, 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 he's got in and persuaded you that the cross no longer works with that particular thing that, I don't know, did it happen years ago? That one thing that you've always regretted. And uh, once you get to shame, it can, it can sometimes take a little bit longer or harder just to, just to unpick one of the things that we run here in June is the freedom journey. Actually, Angie runs that. I would really encourage you, if, if I'm speaking to you on this, to look at the freedom journey. It's five, six weeks, and it will just help you um, row back from that sense of shame, if you feel that, so that you can recover the freedom that Jesus has won for you on the cross. So we've got uh, Beware the Slippery Slope, yeah? Never forget you're forgiven. And then the other way to um, resist the devil is to don't take it personally. It says here, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of suffering. Uh, the devil has, look, <laughs> the devil has more in mind for your life than whether you, I nick a, a lime from Asda. And I suppose he's got to start somewhere. But what he's really after is to shame me, to discourage me, uh, to compromise my integrity, and to doubt God, and doubt myself, so that then I may pray a little less and attend a little less and give a little less, maybe even at some point, give up. And you know what? There's giving up and then there's sort of that, like it giving up inside. Because sometimes you can go through the motions on the outside for quite a long time while you've died on the inside. But by the same token, Jesus, he has a plan for your life as well. And honestly, it's not just to keep your nose clean. <laughs> there's much more in the mind of God than that. What is at stake here is the purpose of your life. The devil is after your purpose. Do you think the devil wants you walking into work or back into your family or situation this week, smiling, talking about the grace of Jesus, being kind, helping, serving, lifting up his name wherever you can? Do you, do you think the devil wants the people of St. Peter's walking and praying the streets of Brighton, crying out for God's kingdom to come in our city? Do you think the devil wants this place full of alpha guests finding faith, broken people finding hope, homeless people being embraced and loved, anxious people finding relief? It's not about you. Don't take it personally. There's a whole, it says, family of believers throughout the world which I take to mean in Brighton and on the South Coast and in our nation and in Ukraine and Russia and China. Stay in the pack. Keep walking forward.
stand in the faith. Because you are carrying something very special. Throughout scripture, a small boy will slay a giant because of what he's carrying. And another boy will feed 5,000. A forgiven fisherman will lead a church. And ordinary men and women will see miraculous healings. Throughout history, missions will be launched, churches planted, and God use people to transform society. And now it's your turn and my turn. There's a destiny and an anointing on you. You are not what you think, Albertine Orton. There is a glory inside of you to transform our world in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Spirit. So no wonder the devil is prowling around looking to devour you. But stand firm in the faith. Resist him. And then by his grace, Jesus will make you strong, firm and steadfast for his eternal glory. Amen. Amen. Let's stand uh, together. Let's stand together. Now come Holy Spirit. I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit now to come and drive uh, these truths deep into our hearts. Here we, we live from our hearts. And uh, what the Spirit wants to do is, is speak to your heart. He wants to root this deeply in your heart. So let's just give him um, space to do that. Come Holy Spirit. as we settle for a moment in the Spirit. Just allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you. Often he does that through a a thought, something that comes to mind. And when that happens, just weigh up for a moment. Is that a distraction? Or is it something that the Lord is just putting his finger on that I need to attend to? So just wait in the quiet and just let him speak to you. He he always speaks the Holy Spirit uh, when we give him space. In um, the book, uh, Pilgrim's Progress, I've just thought of this. Uh, There's a picture of, um, or an image of Christian uh, dragging to the cross uh, a very heavy rucksack and leaving it at the cross and becoming free of that burden. And I think that the Lord Jesus wants to take you, some of you, to the cross again today. And leave your burdens. Things that you shouldn't be carrying around. Because he died for those things. So if any of those things have come to mind in that quiet. Why don't you just systematically bring them to the cross. And that will be a real battle. Because um, the devil wants to keep you in that place of guilt and shame. But the cross is more powerful. That's why it says that the cross on the cross, Jesus defeated the powers of the enemy. 
So just allow that victory to work itself in your life now. If that's, um, if that's you, just while other people have got their eyes closed, um, in a moment I'm just going to um, declare, I, I can do this as a priest, a prayer of absolution to remind you again uh, that you're forgiven. So if that's you and you want to receive again that absolution, just raise a hand, just raise a hand. You don't have to open your eyes and everyone's got their eyes closed. Yeah, and I'm just going to pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you that on the cross you defeated the power of sin and the effect of sin, past, present and future now, and declare that the cross works for each of these men and women today. And I declare in the name of Jesus that you are free. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to uh, pray again. Let's just wait again on the Spirit. Ask the Spirit to fill us. Let's just see what he wants to do in these remaining minutes. I think that the Holy Spirit wants us to pray around this area of purpose today. Uh, what it is, is that um, I feel the Holy Spirit talking to us that um, some of us have just lost our way a little bit in the purpose of our lives. That I think if you were to track back to 2019, you had a fair idea of what God want, was doing in you and through you. But for good understandable reasons you've it's just been knocked off track a bit and um, you kind of know what that purpose is but but you're not quite living it at the moment you've been distracted or caught off guard or whatever it might be and I think God is speaking to you about no, no 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 I need you to get back I need you to recover that purpose and that call I gave you I think that may be in all kinds of areas uh, but let's just see whether that is the Holy Spirit. If that's you, will you come to the front and we're going to pray for you. You don't have to say uh, the details of it, but if you know that that's a word for you, will you, will you come to the front and we know uh, whether it's right or not? Just um, push out if you're in the middle of a row, if you want to respond. Thank you. I think there's others of you, yeah, come, come right through some space here. There's others of you that um, you, you're just saying, um, you want to say yes, Lord, again. You, you realise or you've been made aware again uh, that this is a, a, there's a spiritual element to your life. Uh, it's a spiritual warfare. And uh, you're wanting to say, yeah, uh, I'm, I want to stand firm in my faith. Uh, I'm not going to let the devil... Um, take me out in any way here and again um, you can do that from where you are you don't need to come forward but if it's a help to you to come forward and get someone just to pray for you uh, just make your way up as well and maybe the prayer team could come uh, and pray yeah. oh well done you taking on taking on Wes has she gone to the hospital has she oh amazing let's well let's have you ever led worship before <laughs> oh, good. Well, Wes is going to lead us in, in some worship while we wait. And this would be a great time, you know, if you're here with a friend or somebody in your group or one of your family to say, you know, I, I, what I would do is I would just say, I would just pray for alertness and self-control. You know, self-control is the fruit of the Spirit. So it's always a good prayer uh, to pray.
There's a table you prepared for me in the presence of my enemies. It's your body and your blood you shed for me, and this is how I find my battles. See again. There's a table you prepared for me In the presence of my enemy It's your body and your blood you shed for me And this is how I find my battles And I'd be my song of praise for all you've done and this is how I find my battles this is how I find my battles and this is how I find my battles and this is how and this is how I find my battles and this is how I find my battles this is how I find my battles And this is how There's a table There's a table you prepared for me In the presence of my enemies It's your body and your blood you shed this is how I find my battles And I believe you've overcome And I will lift my song of praise for all you've done And this is how I find my battles and This is how I find my battles this is how I find my battles And this is how And this is how I find my battles And this is how I find my battles And this is how I find my battles And this is It may 
may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Should we understand as we sing this to finish the service? Well done. in your faith because you know that your family of believers throughout the world are facing the same kinds of challenges and after you've suffered a little while God will restore you to himself and make you strong firm and steadfast 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 8 can I encourage you to remember it and Lord Jesus, we want to pray, Lord, for your grace to be poured out again on our lives. Lord, we thank you for the freedom. Lord, help us to live lives that look free this week. And not only inside, but with everybody that we come across. Help us, Lord, to contend for truth and justice in our prayers this week. Wherever we're praying, each of those mornings around the city. And we pray, Lord, that you would come by your power of your spirit and transform more and more the city that we're lifting. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks so much for joining us today. And uh, will you just check in with the person that um, you saw earlier and spoke to just to make sure uh, that they've got plans for lunch or whatever they're up to, whether they're in a group, um, how people are doing things with a prayer week. Um, make sure you take this and we'll see you um, during the week and on Tuesday for Kingdom Come.